And we'll take this old brush and just making little X's, little crisscross strokes. We'll just very quickly drop in just a little warm part in the sky here. Maybe we'll have a little pink in the sky. I sort of like that. And still using our little crisscross strokes, X's. That's all they are, little X's. We'll just apply a little bit of the phthalo blue. Something about like so. come back after we clean the brush and blend that together. Now the blue is many, many times stronger than this little pink area. It'll just eat it up, so be careful. Be careful. It'll all go away. If you want to make the indication of a happy little cloud, all you do is just sort of tap. A little stringy cloud just lives right there in the brush. And that easy. We'll blend him out and have a little stringer cloud. And it's very easy to paint in this style. Still water is always level. And I think today we'll have still water. So pull from the outside in. Outside in. Something about like so. All right. Take off the excess <laughs> and just beat the devil out of it. That's really the most fun part of it. Now with a clean brush and it's relatively dry from just beating it, we'll start in the light area which is the pink and we'll blend it all together. Something about like so. That's all there is to it. Okay, and down here we'll just do the same thing. There. Let's take the corner of the brush and just pull down, something about like so. Straight down, straight down. I'll make it look like little distant trees live far back in the distance. A little more color, and we'll just have it, there you go, I don't know, right there. In your world, you create any illusion that you want. There, but I want to keep the bottom light so it looks like mist. You could even take another two inch brush, and I have several, and tap it. Really get in there and tap it and then lift upward. It'll help create that illusion of mist right down at the bottom. And let's put another little layer in here. Just touching and pulling downward. That's all we're doing. That's really all we're doing. Something about like that. There. And we don't know where that goes. It doesn't matter at this point. And back to our other two inch brush. And we'll tap this. I want to create mist again. Notice this separation. It's caused because of the difference in color, difference in value. Little trees back in here. Now these are a little closer. You're seeing a little more detail, a little more distinct. There, and we just drop them in. We don't know where they go, wherever you want them. That's exactly exactly where they should live. Don't put too much detail in here. It's too far away. You're not going to see a lot of detail. You see detail when it's very close to you. When things are far away, you make out form, shape, basic color. That's all. To save you detail to the foreground. The lack of detail helps also create that illusion of distance and depth in your painting. It's very, very important. Very important. Okay. I'm going to tap a little of that. That'll help create that illusion of mist down there, too. There, lift slightly upward. Lightly. Take a two-inch brush touch and pull down. Just pull straight down. It's most important that it goes straight down. 
something like so. Straight down. Make those little noises. And very lightly go across there. And instantly we have some nice reflex. Take a little, I just use a little white. If you want to create another plane in your painting, take a little white and lift upward. And it'll make little areas back here that looks like a whole different plane and the white will end up looking like little trunks in those trees. There, that easy. And we can go right up in here and we can just drop in just a little water line. Just a happy little water line that lives back in here somewhere. We don't know where it is. Don't know that we even care. Just let your imagination take you anywhere you want to go. A lot of times I start a painting and have nothing in mind but the time of day and the time of year. Let's have a little evergreen tree. Lee lives right there. See? Just make a line, take the corner of the brush, make a touch. Make another one. And just sort of work from the center out. There it goes. It's easier to do them fast than it is slow, though. Here they come. Just sort of back and forth. I had a lady in class one time told me it was like making Z's, the letter Z. She called them Z trees. So I guess that's as good of an analogy as any. From the center out. The center of the tree should be the thickest, darkest, strongest part of the tree. Because you have leaves on the back, you have a trunk in the middle, and you have leaves on this side. We'll have one more in there. There we go. I have a little family of trees. You know, if you've painted with me before, I think everybody should have a friend. Even a tree. Even a tree needs a friend. Now, if you want to reflect those, just pop in some general indications of where they are. No big deal, see? Because we don't make mistakes here. We have happy accidents. <laughs> Very quickly, you learn to work with anything that happens. And we can take that green, and let's go back and put some highlights on our little evergreen trees. There they go. All right, this little tree here. He's saying, don't leave me out. I need some too. There we are, there we are, there we are. All right. And we can just take this brush and let's just pop in the indication of some little bushes that live down here, right down in his little foots. Something about like that. How's that? That looks like a little island. Let's put some dirt there. Let's take some white, a little dark. And we'll take this and we'll just put the indication here of a little bit of soil, some dirt, some kind. So gotta have a place if this is a little island for all this to sit on. This is your bravery test. Take the corner of the old two inch brush and let's just begin laying in a basic shape here for a tree that lives right there. Right there. Big old tree. Use just the corner of the brush. Just the corner of the brush. There we go. See? That's all there is to it. Just the corner. Think about shape and form. Drop these little rascals in wherever you want them. Wherever. You really are the creator on this piece of canvas. You can do anything. You can move rivers, mountains. Create any illusion that you want here. I like big trees and we have one living in our world right there. There he comes. We should have done this with a two inch brush. It'd been a lot faster. There we go. Just drop it in wherever you think it should be. All right. Boy, I said big tree. I wasn't kidding. This is a monster tree. Huge tree. And you could have done it with a two inch brush just as easy, but much quicker. Here. Let's put a highlight or two on here. Evergreens are normally darker than other trees. So don't, don't kill all the dark area in your, in your evergreen. It happens sometimes. It gets feeling good and you don't know when to stop. There. And the base of the tree should be darker than the top. There's big shadow areas, little bushes, one at a time, one at a time. There's a happy little bush. He lives right there. You knew he was there, didn't you? 
with a painting. There, now, see? Now they become part of the painting. There we go. It's like so. And we'll make all kinds of little bushes and trees and happy little things that live here in our world. <laughs>